In this video we're going to be using Bernoulli's equation to see what happens to the pressure of water in a pipe as we constrict the pipe as diameter. So in this example we have a flow of water down the pipe of 0.025 meters cubed per second. The initial area of the pipe is 0.07 meters squared. We don't know what the velocity at point 0.1 is but we know the pressure is 5,000 newtons per meter squared. We then constrict the area of the pipe, so the new area is 0.04 meters squared and we don't know the velocity or the pressure at point number 2. So ultimately what we're trying to find here is that pressure P2 at point 2 in the pipe. So what we need to solve this equation is Bernoulli's equation for this problem. So we know that elevation plus pressure head plus velocity head at, two, at 1 are equal to elevation plus pressure head plus velocity head at point number 2. So this is Bernoulli's equation that we can apply to this example. And what we're trying to find here is this term P2 the pressure at point number two in this system. Now the problem we have is that we've, apart from P2, we've got five other unknowns in this equation. So to be able to solve it, we need to reduce that down. So P2 is our only unknown. But if we have a look at the pipe, we can see that the elevation is the same all the way through the pipe. So Z1 is gonna be the same as Z2, which means that we can actually cancel those terms out of the equation so we can get rid of Z1 we can get rid of Z2. So we can actually say that the pressure head at 1 plus the velocity head at 1 equals the pressure head at 2 and the velocity head at 2. So we can just rearrange that equation for P2. So the pressure head at 2 is going to be equal to the pressure head at 1 plus the velocity head at 1 minus the velocity head at 2. So we know what P1 is because we're given it in the question, but we don't know what U1 is and we don't know what U2 is. But here we can just use the principle of continuity. So we know that Q equals UA, which equals U1A1 equals U2A2. So we can say that U1 equals Q over A1. So our Q is given in the question, 0.025 meters cubed per second. A1 is given in the question as 0.07 meters squared. So our velocity at 1 is going to be 0.357 meters per second. U2 is exactly the same procedure, so Q is the same. We now divide that by A2. So 0.025 divided by A2, which is 0.04 meters squared gives us our velocity at 2 of 0.625 meters per second. So here we can see the basic principle of continuity. So at point number 1 we've got a large area and a smaller velocity. At point number 2 the area is reducing because the flow is staying the same the velocity must increase to uh, give us our principle of continuity. So now we've got u1 and U2, that means that the only unknown in this equation is P2. So what we can do to solve the equation is just enter the terms into the, the equation that we've rearranged here to give us P2. So we know that P2, in terms of pressure head, is P1 over rho g, so P1 is given in the question as 5,000 newtons per meter squared, divided by density of water times by gravity plus u1 squared over 2g so we've calculated u1 as 0.357 squared divided by 2 times gravity and then minus u2 squared over 2g so we've already calculated u2 squared divided by 2 times gravity which gives us our pressure head in meters at 2 of 0. 
four, nine, six meters. But the final thing we want to do is actually convert this answer into a pressure in newtons per meter squared. So our pressure head in meters is pressure over rho g. So if we actually want to calculate P2 in terms of units of pressure, that's going to be our answer in meters times by rho g, so times by density of water and gravity, which gives us a pressure at 2 of 4868.5 newtons per meter squared. So this is actually an answer that some people initially find slightly counterintuitive because we start out with a low velocity in a large area, then we constrict the pipe so we have a much quicker velocity and sometimes people expect the pressure to go up when we're constricting the pipe and increasing the velocity but we can actually see from this, uh, from what the procedure we've just done, that the pressure is going down so the pressure at 1 is 5,000 newtons per meter squared whereas the pressure at 2 is 4,868.5 newtons per meter squared so the pressure is actually dropping at 0 0.2. So to explain why that's the case, what we need to do is think about what's happening to the various pressure heads and uh, velocity heads inside this pipe. So our elevation in this pipe is staying the same throughout the example. We're assuming there are no losses, so the total energy inside this pipe is also remaining constant throughout the example. If we think at the first, at point number one, the energy in addition to the elevation is going to have two components. It's going to have a component of velocity head, so u squared over 2g, and it's going to have a component of pressure head, so p1 over rho g. So the total energy is made up of the energy in our velocity head and the energy in our pressure head and the total energy is not changing. But as we constrict the pipe, what we're doing is forcing the velocity to increase because the flow is not changing. We're reducing the area to, so to maintain the flow rate the velocity must increase. So as the velocity increases, the proportion of the total energy that's made up of velocity head is also increasing. So what that means is if our total energy level is remaining the same, that means we need to have a reduction in pressure to conserve our energy. So P2 over rho g is going to be smaller than P1 over rho g. So what we've done in this example is we've used Bernoulli's equation and the principle of continuity to work out the pressure at point 0.2 in a constricted pipe given the pressure at point 0.1 and the flow in the pipe.